A great pleasure to welcome to What's Next, Warren Winchester, who's the GM of Ventures, and uh, Jason Green, who's the GM of Property at Fed Group. And, uh, you know, finance serves as the lifeblood of various ventures, from commercial properties and alternative sectors like agriculture, uh, to the installation of renewable energy sources, such as solar panels, for example. Those are playing a vital role in driving economic activity and fostering prosperity. Now, in this episode of What's Next, we examine the nuances of providing finance in diverse domains, emphasizing the importance of understanding clients' needs and the importance of aligning financial solutions with those needs, as well as the needs of the broader community and the environment which which we, you know, which we explore around us. Now, we explore innovative approaches to financing, highlighting the role of FSPs in supporting infrastructure development and enhancing stability in the South African economy. So a great pleasure it is to welcome uh, both of you uh, to this particular episode of What's Next. Warren Winchester, as I mentioned, who is the GM of Ventures and Jason Green, the GM of Property. How are you guys doing? Yeah, very well, Aki. Thank you for having us. We're excited to be here. Yeah, thanks, Aki. Hi. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this uh, particular episode because, you know, it's, you know, when we talk about, you know, investing, we talk about that diversity and diversity in everything that we do in life, right? Um, and investing is no different. When you look at the biggest challenges that are faced by those seeking commercial property finance in South Africa, what would you say are the biggest challenges right now? Thanks, Aki. Um, geez, I mean, I think the commercial property landscape in South Africa has has come through a period of, of the very least flatness, you know, across the, the the general market. I mean, there are certainly pockets of opportunity and excellence that we see, you know, whether that's down to geographics or, or certain sectors. But but it's there, there, there are a number of challenges uh, for, for for investors in the space. And I think what we look to do is to provide a solution that allows. Um, us to participate in those pockets of excellence with our chosen partners, yeah, we, we see them as such. And it's about how do we how do we understand what they're trying to achieve and how can we best be leverage, you know, to to come to the party with solutions, whether that's on 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 the structure of these solutions or or working alongside our partners to to unlock value and reduce waste. Um, be that again through the, the the nature of the facility or through the introduction of of complementary uh, sort of products around broader kind of property ecosystem. Mm. Um, you know, it's it's uh, the challenges to go back to your question. You know, whether it's whether it's got to do with uh, municipalities and, and the upkeep of infrastructure, or whether it's got to do with the interest rate cycle and inflation and the like. You know, it, it it comes down to to very quickly having that ability to to move between the sectors which are um, uh, creating significant significant value, of which there are a number. But we're seeing we're seeing these sorts of focus points in the market, and and, and that's where that's where the opportunities are. Um, more broadly, it's about it's about really getting to the nuts and bolts of these assets. It's it's coming down very granular, you know, and understanding yeah. what are the operational impacts of these of the, of the various sort of systems and the and how can we play our part in, in, in driving value. You know, it's quite interesting. You know, I even look at the area where Fed Group is. You you, you guys are sh- sh- just off Fredman Drive in Santon, right? And it's just amazing how that whole area and Santon has changed from a commercial point of view since COVID, for example, you know, where a lot of buildings are now being transformed into residential, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, how, how do actually, how do commercial property owners benefit when they have access to financing, right, that serves their specific needs? Do, do you have any examples to back this up? We have the ability to structure solutions that's, Benefits borrowers, particularly in these sorts of period, for instance, let's say you know interest rates are where they are. You know the the investment thesis that underpins the acquisition or, or the the uh, uh, ownership of a commercial property is is uh, a um, equation around yield. You know, and and your 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 cost of capital and the cash flow implications of your finance, you know, directly impact the success of those opportunities. And that's where we can come to the party with something, for instance, that's a little bit different. I mean, we. We pride ourselves in offering solutions and structures that are bespoke for our clients. Uh, again, not everything to everyone. So we very much cherry pick our clients. We want guys who drive impact, who, who, whether that sort of societal or, or um, in terms of the environment, kind of some of the, the solutions that we can we can bring to the party there too. Um, we we want to find the guys who, who are looking to create value, and we want to come alongside them and help them do so. So again, a number of structures that we can get quite 
uh, detailed about. Um, it, obviously, our view of our borrowers, we can't share too much of the details there. But, but nevertheless, there are a myriad of structures uh, you know, in the space. I think, yeah. I think for us, one one general kind of example is is that we we position ourselves as alternative investment specialists. You know, we 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 focus on, for instance, in our world property space. That is something we pride ourselves on and really understanding the value of those assets and underlying security and where there is opportunity to create value. And that allows us, for instance, to, to create a facility that uh, has a perhaps a low amortization profile where we take a good conservative view on the asset. We, we make sure that we are totally comfortable over the facility term with a good prospect of a, of a renewal or a refire, that kind of thing. Mm. And the implication of the amortization is a positive liquidity cash flow implication for our borrowers. And again, understanding where interest rates are, understanding where um, people are feeling the pinch, you know, across the board, this is a significant sort of back in their space, uh, be it uh, yeah. allowing them to invest that excess capital back into their business or um, providing that buffer, you know, any future shocks. Oh, it's very interesting. I, I remember Fed Group when you guys, uh, you, you saw this uh, revolution of solar a long time ago. I remember attending one of your events where you could actually invest in, in a solar panel and, and get the yields from that. Uh, a long time back, um, but solar at the moment is is very sexy. Obviously, with you know the the the, the energy challenges we have in the country, uh, it's a, it's a great investment at the moment, is, and and also it gives you that redundancy in a business. And solar is obviously a, a, a major focus when it comes to commercial property finance in 2024. I'm just trying to remember when you guys first identified that trend. It, it's it must be a decade or more, if if I'm not mistaken. And how have you developed your funding models accordingly around solar? What do you what have you seen and 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 those trends? Tell me about those trends. Let me start off from the sort of the property side. Um, what you're saying is spot on. I think it's uh, no one is, is sort of aloof to the fact that uh, you know what we're experiencing right now with our uh, you know sort of parastatal electricity supply. Is, uh, is significantly impacting you know businesses around us, uh, significantly impacting the investment portfolios of commercial property owners, and what we are bringing to the party, um, you know, through the integration of our soil that you've seen and various sort of funding structures in our space, is the ability to to decouple you know the exposure to the grid, uh, to reduce that um, impact that low chaining can have on these businesses, but also you know there's a life cycle sort of analysis here, and and while there might be a capital sort of you know equation up front. Over the course of these investments, you 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 reduce your exposure to new so tariff increases, for instance. So, you know, even assuming stability comes back in time, which you know we expect to do in time, um, this allows us to to create a again a positive operational cash flow application for these businesses. Again, supporting the investment pieces around these commercial assets and creating value. Uh, while producing waste. Yeah, Aki, you're right. It was around 10 years ago where we really identified this as a as a need and uh, something that we needed to fulfill uh, looking forward in terms of the investment landscape in South Africa. Energy security being critical not only to uh, commercial operations but to individuals at the same time. Um, looking at the way that we look at how we fund those various um, solutions, um, like Jason mentioned, we have our own EPC that gets involved in the design and really understanding the needs of the underlying power users. So being able to understand uh, how much power do they require, how much power we're we able to generate, and custom building the financing solutions around that. Um, so if you look at uh, three of the main offerings in terms of that, there's normally a lease to own or an installment sale agreement, um, which is your normal vanilla type structures. And then we also look at power purchase agreements, whereby we'll actually erect that uh, solar solution on the roof on behalf of um, the landlord. And then there's a, a, an active generation of that electricity that is consumed by the underlying landlords. So we really try to understand um, what penetration can we achieve, what are the needs in terms of that power requirement, and what is the best funding solution that meets the underlying needs of those landlords and power users. Okay. So, I mean, when you look at that, uh, how easy is it to, to access your solar-focused commercial finance options? Uh, okay, I think what really allows for, a, for ease of access to this funding is our access to specialists in these various um, uh, sectors and really having energy experts as well as financial services um, skills uh, within our building really allows us uh, to understand very quickly the needs, understand very quickly in terms of the due diligence, the financial viability of a project, 
and we really pride ourselves on ease of access and being able to have a quick turnaround time in terms of a yes or no decision um, and then really delving down in um, and understanding the underlying needs to be able to um, build a bespoke solution for each one of our partners that we look at providing funding to. Okay. Yeah, I know because it's 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 um you know you think it's as simple as putting up uh, solar panels on the roof and and you know using inverters and that sort of thing. It, it's complex, you know, and you've got to have the right gearing when it comes to financing, and you know you've got to start projecting a years ahead. So I know you've got the energy experts there as well, but you've also got the actuaries and all those other people that uh, kind of look into the future and say what will happen in four or five years from now. But agriculture is another fascinating sector that you guys are involved with. And I automatically think of, of blueberries and uh, macadamia nuts, and you've been doing this for years. But agriculture is another sector where, where financing is a big priority, right? How easy is it for, for farmers to access financing in a, in a manner that is both appropriate for their business structure and uh, you know, having that unique financial timeline and those timelines, which are so important, right? Uh, how do you see that, Warren? Yes, definitely, Aki. I think uh, the agricultural space is quite a nuanced space in terms of the underlying yields that come off the different sectors or the different produce, um, depending on, on, on what the guys are farming. And once again, it lends itself to having specialists uh, in the building that are really able to understand the assets and help the guys invest in real life assets, on the ground assets. So just like in our solar space, the similar in our agricultural space, it's really we've had time to refine those financial models to really build out networks of experts that are able to uh, to provide input into it, while at the same time having um, proper corporate governance structures within uh, our uh, mandates to be able to provide independent review uh, uh, to each of these projects. And then really looking at how do we build a bespoke solution for our uh, chosen partners. Mm -hmm. We know that there's different uh, cash cycles, there's different yield potentials, there's different climatic conditions that affect each of these underlying assets. And really understanding that and being able to build a, a finance solution that uh, really ties into those cycles within the agricultural business is critical to the success of it and critical to our offering. And once again, priding ourselves on ease of access and really being able to to to, to uh, provide this type of funding uh, fairly easily to the guys that approach us for it. Yeah, I mean, it's I think it's absolutely fascinating, and you guys have got years of experience. You know, you're not just coming into this game now because let's let's be honest, those dynamics are both challenging and they're very different in every single market. Um, how how has Fed Group educated itself on, on the local market dynamics? And how, how does this affect its ability to serve specific market segments like, you know, commercial property ownership and, and agriculture, for example? It's a good question. I mean, look, being a 30 year plus old business, we, we've built a lot of the infrastructure around what supports our day to day in our world, you know, and we're continuously iterating and improving. Uh, and that forms as a foundation that we continue to build on. And, and as we as we diversify our specializations, or as we have done sort of in more recent history, you know, it's allowed us to bring in expertise, you know, from from the right markets to to hit those gaps that that, that, that we're seeing, you know, and, and really come to 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 the market with something that's interesting. Um, so it's very much about building on what we understand, and that is and that is assessing counterparties, understanding underlying securities, understanding the modeling and the operations of these different types of businesses and these sectors. And, and also, as Warren touched on, you know, partnering with the right people in our space, it's, it's, about, it's about bringing the right people, you know, around the table who can help to support us and also help to guide us and make sure that we are, you know, always getting the full picture. Uh, it, that enables us to provide the ultimate kind of solutions. Um, and that's what we've experienced, uh, Warren. Yes, definitely. To add on uh, to Jason, I think uh, it's critical having that uh, expertise in the room when we're yeah. assessing each of these projects and mm -hmm. really building out our institutional knowledge around it. Yeah. Um, you know, we've all got our chosen uh, specialities, but we know that uh, there's so many elements that touch each one of these businesses, whether you're looking at commercial property or agriculture or even in the solar space, you know, there's yeah. engineering skills that's needed, there's distribution, there's import, export, and logistics. There's so many different elements around it that you really need to get the experts involved to, to, to uh, get the full picture 
and to refine those financial models and, and drive the investments into these various sectors that help unlock value for those chosen partners, but at the same time, mitigate risks uh, in these projects mm -hmm. and the ability to help unlock value and drive yields for each of our chosen partners um, and mm -hmm. really uh, excel at bringing our networks together and the various specialists to help achieve that. No, I find it fascinating because, you know, when you look at finance, right, um, you guys serve a very niched market, right? It's not like you're financing a car or you're financing a building, et cetera, et cetera. So how has Fed Group tailored its finance products to meet those unique needs? Because let's be honest, you know, farming is very unique. And, and uh, how do you guys do it in South Africa when you look at how many different crops there are and, you know, different regions get different rainfall forecasts, there's different risks, et cetera. How do you guys finance these products at Fed Group? Yeah, I think uh, initially that all boils down to the due diligence phase in terms of these projects. Yeah. Really understanding the climatic conditions, the soil conditions, the 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 not only the national uh, sector but the international view or the global view around those various sectors, and really being able to then incorporate that into our due diligence process. And at the same time, into our financial modeling that takes place on it. Um, what we pride ourselves on is being able to match the cash flow cycles of the funding to the life cycle and the production cycle of the underlying assets. Really making sure that we don't put undue pressure on the operation. And we're looking at trying to match um, those profiles as close as possible so that we can really drive returns, not only in the investment space, but also in the operational space for our chosen partners. Just to add to that, Warren, I think it's important. You know, uh, where we play in our respective sort of uh, chosen sectors, I suppose, is it comes down to, to, at the end of the day, there's a counterparty who is investing in the real economy. And these are real assets that, that you know, underpin those, those sort of investment pieces. And that's why it's important that we have specialists who can focus on those respective spaces and, and help not only unlock value for ourselves and for our chosen partners, but, but more broadly within the economy. You know, it, it's, about, it's about real impact. We, we, we really do take it to heart and, it's, and it forms part of the assessment and consideration of every opportunity. You know? Yeah, and I think that, that expertise is important, right? Because, you know, you guys bring a very unique set of skills to that particular transaction and how you guys assist farmers, et cetera. Because at the moment, I mean, if you look at it globally, uh, you know, you might think farming is just, you know, planting seeds and watering those plants, but it's actually become quite a sophisticated business. You know, you've got to manage the crops properly. You've got to put in, uh, you know, uh, look at AI, for example, even use, you know, say things like AI to kind of predict what's going to happen and, and how you use the weather prediction. So your unique set of skills when it comes to helping those farmers is also pretty cool as well. You guys have some uh, specific success stories that you want to share with us in the agricultural sector to highlight what you've just been talking about. Yes, definitely, Aki. And I think one of the key considerations that J uh, Jason might have touched on is also assessing not only the societal impact, but also the environmental impact and really mm. looking at how can we do things differently and, and re really how can we elevate the operations uh, in the agricultural space. Um, and once again, collaboration within the various uh, verticals within Fed Group is, is key to the success stories. So being able to look at, you know, as an example, not only primary agriculture and perhaps extending the number of hectares of trees or, or bushes that are planted, but then really looking at how do we get vertically integrated into not only the operation, but perhaps the sector as a whole. So being able to look at uh, assisting the guys to expand. And so we know that now they're going to be employing uh, larger numbers of individuals on those farms. But we know that some of this projects might have to be processed or stored. So, you know, we've uh, been involved in not only on the primary agricultural side, but then looking at with the uh, commercial property expertise, looking at pack houses, looking at cold stores, looking at bringing green energy to those solutions so that the reliance on the grid is reduced and the cost of the electricity is reduced, helping drive the yield and the profitability. And then looking at really the downstream um, impact of, the, of, of those projects and really looking at the provision of capital into uh, every element that it touches and really how do we drive the true impact and, and, and the economic development uh, across all these projects. So really looking at uh, our skill sets and the full vertical integration, um, we're finding uh, quite a bit of success in that area, being able to blend that skill set together. 
Uh, absolutely fascinating. I, I love your business, guys, and what you guys do and how diverse uh, Fed Group is. So Warren Winchester is the GM of Ventures, Jason Green, GM of Property at Fed Group. Thank you very much for joining us uh, for this episode of What's Next, guys. Thanks, Aki. We appreciate it. Thanks, Aki. Always enjoy our conversation. So thanks a lot.